Okay, chapter 8 1 is uh, titled Parabolas. Uh, today we're just going to draft a couple of parabolas using a technique that's going to be on that white sheet of paper I passed out for you. Um, we're going to be able to write an equation of parabola in standard form, find the vertex focus equation, directrix equation, the axis of symmetry, and know what those things mean, and be able to sketch the graph of parabola after today. Uh, the white sheet of paper on the front. Half. I, I used white instead of yellow like I normally do because I use colors to identify things. I thought that was a little easier to draw arrows to things. But um, we look at a, a graphed parabola. What I'm expecting to see is the parabola itself, which is the blue object. Um, and then you're going to have a dotted line that goes to the vertex and focus. And you're going to have another dotted line that's perpendicular to it called the directrix. So the directrix is going to be like this horizontally. For an up-down parabola, it's going to be positioned vertically for a left-right parabola. It's always perpendicular to the axis of symmetry. Now, back when we did parabolas before, we found a vertex, we found the axis of symmetry. We didn't deal with a focus or a directrix. Uh, these two things are just based on the locus definition of a parabola. Parabola is a set of all points that are equidistant from a line and a point. That's what it is. So if I pick any point on the parabola, let's say I go right here. This distance is equal to this distance. And obviously they don't look equal because that's not perfectly drawn. If you draw it perfectly, they'll, they'll be the same distance. Those two distances will be equal. Any point along the parabola will be the same distance from the focus and the directrix. That's what their purpose is. Um, all I care to see when you're graphing a parabola is that you get a correct standard form, which either looks like this, x is squared, y isn't, or y is squared, x isn't. 4p is a number that's always being multiplied by the non-squared object. That's what standard form looks like. And what standard form gives me is the coordinates of the, the vertex, h comma k is the vertex. And then it also gives me p, which tells me how far to go from the vertex to find the focus and the directrix. And I know that it goes up or down or left to right based on signs of things. So if p is positive, and x is squared, it goes up. If p is negative, and x is squared, it goes down. If p is positive, and y is squared, it goes right. If p is negative, and y is squared, it goes left. So you have the ability to determine from a standard form what direction it goes, up, down, left, or right. You have to identify the vertex, h comma k. You have to find out how far to go, left or right, or up or down, to get to the focus and the directrix. The axis of symmetry goes through the focus and the vertex. The other thing I've got labeled here is called the lattice rectum. That is a measure across the focus, and it's exactly 4p long. So whatever this number is here, that's how long the lattice rectum is. That's how wide the parabola is at the focus. So if I'm at the focus here, and I go 2p spaces up and 2p spaces down, I'm going to get two more points on the parabola. So a, a, Basically what we're going to do is we're going to graph the vertex, the focus, we're going to graph these two extra points here, we're just going to connect those three points to make the parabola. The axis of symmetry directrix is drawn on there, every graph should look like this. And what I want you to do is familiarize yourself with the way these things look, because today we're going to graph parabolas, tomorrow we're going to have the graph of a parabola, we're going to write the standard form equation from it. All right, so we're going to be able to go both directions with this. As far as how to graph a parabola, this is the technique I would use. There might be a little redundancy in this, but for the most part it, it does everything you need to do. It takes you step by step through it. The hardest part of the entire process is that step. Write the equation of standard form. Everything else is pretty basic. Use that white sheet of paper and identify what you need to identify. You figure out what P is, it's the number in front, whatever is in front of the non-squared object, divided by 4, that's what P is. Up, down, left, right, X squared, Y squared, P positive, P negative, P positive, P negative. Identify and graph the vertex, HK. Identify, graph, focus, and directors. Move P right and left, or move P up and down from the vertex. Determine how long the lattice rectum is, plot the two points based on that. Identify and graph the axis of symmetry. That's just a going to go through vertex and focus, which are already graphed. Let's sketch the parabola. So we're going to go through all the nine steps on example one. You'll see that it's not too challenging, hopefully. Example two is a little bit more difficult than example one. We'll see that when we get to it. So 
First off, example one, this is as easy a parabola as you're going to get. Okay? What I find in GeoTrig students is when we see something that looks rather complicated looking, and then we give them a really simple problem, they don't know how to handle that. So let me show you how to handle this. First off, when you're looking at a parabola equation, I know it's a parabola equation because x is squared, y isn't. As soon as I see that, the first thing I want to do is I want to separate my terms. To create standard form, separate the terms. Everything containing the squared object goes on one side, everything not goes on the other. So x is squared, everything that isn't x goes to the other side. All right? That's the first step of creating standard form. Whatever is squared, everything containing that goes on one side, everything not containing it goes on the other side. Okay? Then, your job is to complete the square if necessary. All right? Completing the square is necessary if there's something x. So x squared plus 6x, got to complete the square. x squared is just x minus 0 squared. Again, my goal is to create this standard form structure, x minus some number squared. Well, x squared and x minus 0 squared being the same thing, this has the structure I'm looking for. That's what I'm looking to do. So again, if x is missing, x squared plus nothing x, it's just x minus 0. The other thing is I want this to be equal some number, parentheses, y minus k. Okay, again, looking at standard form, going back to this page here, x squared plus some number times y minus k. This is just x, this is just y. This is negative 2. I don't want a negative 2 in front of my y, so I'm going to take that negative 2 out. I don't have a number added to this, so officially there's a plus 0 here, which means there's a plus 0 here, or minus 0, take your pick. Plus 0, minus 0 mean the same thing. In fact, let's call it minus 0 just because it looks like that standard form. But, okay. Looking at that standard form that I have on that white page I gave you, x minus h the quantity squared equals 4p parentheses y minus k. That standard form, that's what it looks like. I've created a standard form, created the structure I need. So what, I, what I've got to do now, here's my standard form. Step two says find p. All right, 4p lives in front of the non-squared object. So that's 4p, right? If 4p is equal to negative 2, what is p equal? Negative 0.5, negative a half, if you will. Okay, we're moving, we're graphing, so decimals are fine. So negative 2 divided by 4 is negative 0.5. Okay, what's squared? X. X. X is squared, which means it's either up or down. Okay, as soon as I see X squared, I know one of those two. The fact that P is a negative value, I'm going to go with the down. So as far as step three is concerned, you have to determine up or down based on what's squared. You have to determine which one it is from those two from the value of P. So already, before I've done anything, I haven't found a vertex, I haven't done anything else, I've got standard form, I've already figured out this. The parabola's going to look like this. Parabola there, focus there, directrix there. I know where things are going to be. I know what it's going to look like before I even graph it because I've got my standard form. I've already figured out that it goes down. That's what a down parabola looks like. It turns down. Focus here, directors above it. So with that in mind, it says step four to plot the vertex. Identify and plot the vertex. So I'm going to put vertex 0, 0. When it tells you to identify something, I want you to write it down. When it says to graph, I want you to graph it. So identification, there's the vertex, V colon, point. Graph it, put the point down. I'm also supposed to graph the identify and graph the focus and directrix. That's next. Focus and directrix come from the value of P. The focus goes down, the directrix goes up in this specific parabola, right? We've already figured that out. So the focus would be right here, one half down from the vertex, and the directrix is going to live one half above the vertex. Know that the focus is a point, the directrix is a line, a dashed line, when you draw it. Okay, again, 
I knew exactly what that's supposed to look like because it says down, and I see on my piece of paper what a down parabola is supposed to look like. Parabola here, focus there, directrix there, right? So if I'm supposed to put these things in, knowing what they look like before I draw them helps. And the value of P tells me exactly how far to go to get them. If it said P equals negative 2, now this goes right there. And this would go up, oops, this would go up here. So whatever P is establishes where those things belong. But again, P equals negative a half. So one half down, one half up. As far as identification, the focus is 0, negative 0.5. The directrix, y equals 0.5. The focus and vertex are points, so they get identified as points. The directrix is a line gets identified as a linear equation. And a horizontal line equation is always y equals number. And the number it equals is exactly 0.5 because that's where it's at. Next step on our process. Determine the length of the lattice rectum. 4p, absolute value of 4p officially is equal to 2. We want length to be positive. So whatever 4p is, make it positive, in this case 2, okay? The lattice rectum occurs at the focus, and we got to be 2 across at the focus, which means I'm going to go 2 spaces to the right and 2 spaces to the left, or sorry, 1 space to the right, 1 space left, sorry, to make the total distance across 2. Since 4p equals 2, the length across the parabola at the focus is equal to 2. One space to the right, one space to the left gives me a length of 2. That was steps 6 and 7. Identify and graph the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is a vertical line. I haven't used black yet. He's a different color. Let's go orange. The axis of symmetry is a vertical line, dashed. It goes to the focus and the vertex. Focus, vertex here. Simply draw a vertical line through both of those guys. There's your axis of symmetry. That's dashed. Dashed, yes. And we want that to be identified also. A, O, S. Notice the axis of symmetry is a line, right? It's a vertical line. Vertical line equations x equals number. In this case, the number is 0. Back in algebra 1, we found the equation of horizontal and vertical lines. That's all we're doing there. You've already graphed them. You just have to identify them. And then the final step is create the graph of the parabola. So draw the graph, the graph of the parabola. This point, this point, and this point. Those three points are part of the parabola. You simply have to continue it on in that direction and that direction. We get a very well-sketched parabola. It has all the details we need in it. Everything of importance has been identified. Everything of importance has been graphed.